Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Get Writing Now. And as I promised last week, today I'm going to be talking about how I write a story or one particular story. And this story is going to be written from a prompt. So in order to find a prompt, I went to a plot generator site on the internet. There are lots of these things around, but this one gave you 10 examples of a first line for a story. And I found a rather interesting one in my first selection. This is it. I always wanted to be a porcupine until it happened. How's that for random? So where to start? Well, I know virtually nothing about porcupines, or I didn't. So the first thing I did was I went to Wikipedia and looked them up. Now, Wikipedia isn't always the best place to find information, but there's something like this where the facts don't matter so much. I decided that's the place to go. These are the things I found out. There are two types of porcupines, Old World and New World. Some New World porcupines live in trees. Hmm, didn't know that. They're generally a nocturnal animal. Their quills have these little barbs on them that stick into the skin so they won't come out. And they can live as long as 27 years. So that's all very well, but how does that make a story? Well, the first thing I thought of was a race and magic. Now, magic is the obvious one. If you suddenly become a porcupine, what else is that other than some kind of magic? And the race came from the fact that they were tree animals. So I have this image of them racing up a tree. Why not? Okay, so the character is in a race and they're climbing up a tree. And they've created a spell. At this point, I'm thinking that it's a race where losing is going to be devastating to the main character. I don't really know how, in what way. I have no idea what's going to happen. So let's get started. Here's the first paragraph I came up with. I always wanted to be a porcupine until it happened. Somehow, my subconscious brain managed to link that fact to the spell at exactly the wrong moment. Yes, I thought animal. Yes, I thought spiky. But honestly, I was hoping for something more like a dragon with a lethal tail. It did have one advantage though. I became so small that they couldn't see me. Okay, so that was the first paragraph done, which was literally my brain spewing out thoughts onto the page. What next? It's definitely running away to save its life. I think that's clear in my head. So how can we use trees and nighttime? When you can't outrun, there are always the trees and the dark of night added to the camouflage. But I forgot it was autumn and the moment I started to jiggle the branches, crunchy leaves began to bite at the air with their dying tune. I was immediately pursued. OK, so I'm still not sure exactly what the pursuers are like, but I do know how they're going to be fought. I need to work out the effects and the outcome because this is supposed to be a very short story, so I don't have many words left. Four sets of orange glowing eyes slunk up the tree behind me. I had only one option. I shot a ring of quills into the bark, creating a painful barrier that would slow them down enough. It was surprisingly freeing and made it easier for me to move. I tried to shut out their hissing, because who knew what I'd end up as if my brain added that to a spell? It didn't bear thinking about. 
O right. This is where I go back to the internet to look up hissing animals. And I get the final line, which is a hissing scorpion. Here we go again. And at this point, I realise what the title is. Epic fail, 6,582. So that's my basic story, but it's not nearly finished yet. Now comes the hard part, the editing. I'm not going to bore you with all the ins and outs of that, because it takes a while. But here is the final story. And I'm going to put them side by side so that you can compare them. Now, you might not be able to see that on a small screen, but you could either look at it on a big screen or take a screenshot. And obviously, I won't be able to fit into the page as well. So I'm going away. Epic fail, 6,582. I always wanted to be a porcupine until it happened. Somehow, my subconscious brain managed to link that obscure fact, hidden in a tiny, inaccessible nook, to the spell I was casting at exactly the wrong moment. Yes, I'd thought animal. Yes, I'd thought spiky. But honestly, I was hoping for something more like a dragon with a lethal tail than a much smaller rodent with a line in lethal quills. It did have one advantage though. I became so small that they couldn't easily see me in the undergrowth. But they weren't going to stay still, and I knew they were faster than me in that form. When you can't outrun, there are always the trees, and the dark of night provided a little extra camouflage. But, me being me, I forgot it was autumn. And the moment I started to jiggle the branches with my rapid ascent, crunchy leaves began to bite at the air with their dying tune. Four sets of orange glowing eyes slunk up the tree behind me, weaving back and forth as if they were trying to make a living basket. I stared down at my body. It was my only weapon. I shot a ring of quills into the bark, creating a barrier that would be painful for them to traverse and slow them down enough for my next awesome move. Another spell. The process was surprisingly freeing. For a start, it made it easier for me to move. I tried to shut out their hissing because who knew what I'd end up as if my brain added that to the magical concoction. Oh, right. A hissing scorpion. Here we go again. And that's it. When I'm writing, I often like to leave the ending open for the reader's interpretation, especially when it's a very short story like this, because you don't have time to explain an awful lot. And as you'll see, I've explained very little about this world or the main character. The only thing we really know is that they get distracted when creating spells and that they're fleeing from some slinky, slidey animals that may or may not be snake-like. I'll be doing some more of these story creation videos in the future, so make sure you subscribe if you want to see them. If you enjoy writing stories, you might want to check out the video mentioned here, which you'll find on my channel page. Until next time.